of God is true regardless. But it will only work in you if you believe it, if you receive it by faith. So I really just want to focus on the posture of our king as he enters into this last week of his ministry. And what is easily the most daunting trial that he has to walk through yet, right? And how does he respond? Does he back down? Does he water down the truth at all? No. Does he compromise anything? Nothing. And I only want you to compare that to yourself to ask yourself, how would you be in the same circumstances? Because you can and will be, right? If you're living this right, right? All those who desire to live godly will what? They will suffer persecution, right? Now, that doesn't mean that you'll necessarily go through all the things Jesus did because he went through them so you wouldn't have to. So don't forget that either, right? Mm, Okay. So my goal here today is just to make, make that image clear. Help us to see Jesus and who he is. I don't want to say who he was. I know we're looking back at an account, but it's who he still is, right? And if he's in you, he is, right? During COVID, I was pressured by my work and, you know, everybody else to wear a mask. And I refused to. And the very first day it was mandated on my job, I tried to. I tried to go along with it. But the whole day it, it bothered my spirit. Right. And it it was like I could hear the devil laughing at me because he knew I walked in divine healing for years. I went into these places of businesses, these places of business, these these banks, these all over this city that I I ran this route in. And I would take them Jesus and I would heal them and I would take care of their problems. You know, I became like a pastor to these people without naming myself that I've never given myself a title. But that's what was happening. So to to me, it felt like hypocrisy, right? And all day the devil was whispering in my my ear, like, look at you. And to the point where one of my stops I walked into, uh, a few of the ladies greeted me. It was a bank. I said, oh, hey, Justin. And then one of the other ladies said, that ain't Justin. You know, he wouldn't wear one of those. Mm. But it was. But after that day, I asked the Lord to give me a, uh, a, a strong, strong confirmation, because we all need those, right? We can't just step out in faith. We, we need 10 confirmations before we decide to do something for God. <laughs> and I went home, and I was praying about it all the way home. I believed I already knew what he wanted me to do, to stand and just not go along with it. And at that time, this was near the beginning when all the mandates started going crazy, and um, Curry was... He was doing a teaching every afternoon. I think it was 12 or 12 or 30 every single day. I don't know if anybody remembers that. But he, he made it a point to go live and to do that every day to encourage. And um, so I hopped on my treadmill when I got home. And I put one of those on for that day. I don't, I don't remember if it was even for that specific day or if it was the day before or whatever it was. And he immediately starts talking about being pulled when you're trying to teach. And going off your notes because the Holy Spirit's pulling you in a specific direction for whatever reason you may not know as the speaker. And he said, well, he's doing that now. And it's because I'm supposed to talk about this stupid mask thing. And he condemned it. (laughs) So I was like, all right, thank you. And so I had to call my boss and have a conversation with him. And, you know, he understood at the same time it was going to cause some possible issues. So I had to write to the corporate office, which is in Houston, by the way, um, why I refused to wear the mask. So I preached the gospel to them for about three or four pages. And I got away with it for a while, but about six or seven months before they pulled me off route because they had too many complaints from customers because I wouldn't wear the mask. Yeah. Um, and I saw more miracles during that time than, than I'd seen, honestly, in a long time before that. Because when there's, when there's more resistance, that should create a greater fight in you yeah. when you really understand, right? <clears throat> when you realize that you're more than an overcomer, then it doesn't matter how big the giant is or seems to be. He cannot overcome you, That's right. but you have to know that you have to be willing to push and to fight and to tell the mountain who's boss, quite frankly. Yeah. But I had been hearing all the pressures, even from other Christians of why I should still wear it so that I don't um, cause those who are weaker in faith to, to stumble and things, all kinds of stuff like that, which of course is taken out of context. 
but I still try to be as loving to people as I can as well, meet them where they're at. And it was bothering me one particular day more than normal, just from the pressure of everybody trying to come down on me for this thing. So I just asked the Lord, I just wanted some comfort, some peace of mind. And the Lord said this to me. He said, if Jesus was there in the flesh, would he wear a mask? I said, no, he would heal people. He would, he wouldn't carry like, and then the next thing he was setting me up. I said, well, no. The next thing he said was, well, he is there in the flesh. He's in your flesh. And you know what I'm saying? I know he's in my spirit, but he is in me, right? My body, my flesh in that sense is the temple of the Holy Ghost, right? So I said all that to, to, to make a, a greater point of what I was trying to say. He's in you. He's yes. with you. Yes. Do what he would do in every situation. That is your answer. Get, get those old bracelets. What would Jesus do? That is your answer to every situation. Yes. It really is that simple. And again, we're only limited by what we're seeing, what we're saying, what we're failing to believe and receive by that belief. Amen. God is never the stop. We are. So can you say that about yourself, what we see in Jesus, about the no compromise, the not backing down, not watering anything down, not changing in the face of certain death? He knew what was coming. That's what we have to remember. He knew what was coming at the end of that week. And he didn't slow down. He didn't stop. He didn't change his mind. Nothing, right? He didn't live in reaction to the devil. He stayed the course. You realize he never changed his plans regardless of what was going on around him, right? He was on the way to Jairus' daughter when he got, you know, stuck in the press, right? And the woman with the issue of blood took her chance and she got healed. Right? But in the course of that happening, because it stopped his slowed his progress, Jairus' daughter passed away. And what did he say? Fear not, only believe. Right. And he went and raised her. He didn't change his plans when he heard about Lazarus being sick either, did he? Nope. He still took his time. He did what he needed to do, what he wanted to do. And then he went when he was ready. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter when you understand the truth. All right? Amen. So do we count ourselves as dead every day? That's really the question. Like Brother Curry and many others I've heard have said many times, if you're waiting until you're in the middle of the conflict to get faith or to make a difficult decision, you're too late, right? You have to, you have to start your day before you even step into it. You have to decide, I'm dying to myself. I'm picking up my cross and I'm following Jesus. It's not about me. This is why doing things like starting your day with prayer and getting into the word and speaking those acknowledgments is so powerful and important. You have to make this decision daily to follow King Jesus. And just as I said last week, there's a, there's a reason we are commanded to bless the Lord. And we've heard that this morning too in the worship, right? Psalm 103, there's a reason because we will be tempted to forget all those benefits by the things that are going on around us in our life, by the attacks, the deliberate attacks of the enemy. You will have opportunity to forget all those benefits because it doesn't feel like they're real right now. That's not how it works, right? We walk by faith, not by sight or any other of your five senses is what I'm getting at. It doesn't matter how you feel. It matters how you see, right? Right? And when you believe that, the other stuff has to line up. But there's a reason I had you pray with me the way that I did. If you don't believe it, God has no obligation to fulfill it. Right? You have to believe his word. Otherwise, everything will be automatic. It doesn't work that way. You have to believe. You have to receive by faith. There's a reason we're told to meditate day and night on his word and to never let them depart from your eyes. And this isn't just your physical eyes, right? It's your spiritual eyes. 